Hi guys, in this lesson we're going to recap over everything we've learned so far in the course. Lesson 1 was a simple introduction which looked at what Knockout is and how it can help us. In Lesson 2 we set up the foundation for our application and looked at how we can initialize it in a sensible way, allowing the use of custom configuration options that the developer implementing our app is likely to want to configure, like the API key and the photo set ID. In Lesson 3 we looked at the view model, which is central to Knockout, and saw how to add observable properties that Knockout will monitor in order to notify subscribers when their value changes, so that elements bound to them can be updated automatically. In Lesson 4 we looked at some of the basic bindings, including the text binding for adding text to an element, and the if binding which adds or removes an element based on a property of the view model. In Lesson 5 we looked at observable arrays, and saw how to populate one with the model objects built from the data we downloaded from Flickr. We also looked at how to create a custom promise object using jQuery in order to perform an AJAX request after another AJAX request has completed. In Lesson 6 we looked at the for each control binding, which allows us to repeat a block of markup for each item in an observable array. We use this to display all of the images we downloaded from Flickr on the page. We also used it to build a select element that will allow our photos to be sorted. We also covered the attribute binding for updating an element's attributes. In Lesson 7 we looked at the event binding, which allows us to easily add an event handler for DOM events triggered by the element the binding is attached to. We used this to add a handler for the change event in order to perform a sort when the sort dropdown was interacted with. In Lesson 8 we looked at the click binding, a specialised form of the event binding for working only with click events. We also saw how to stop the click event bubbling using the click bubble binding, and how to find the root context when in a different binding context, such as inside a for each loop. In lesson 9 we saw how to create custom bindings, and used this feature to add an editable content binding specifically for working with elements that have the content editable attribute. In lesson 10 we looked at computed observables. We learned that these are used to create dependencies between properties in our view model, and are automatically invoked whenever an observable that they reference changes value. In lesson 11 we looked at the visible binding, which uses a property of our view model to determine an element's visibility. We also looked at the 2JS method, which helps us to create a clean serialized representation of the data held in our view model. In lesson 12 we looked at Knockout's value binding, which links the value of an input element to a view model property in a two-way binding. We used this to add filtering capabilities to our application. In lesson 13 we looked at a couple of Knockout's features that can be extremely useful in different situations. We didn't need to make use of all of these in our application, but they're still worthy features that you should be aware of. In lesson 14 we finished off the practical side of the course by adding a final feature to our application, a light box. This was partly a demonstration of how simple light boxes are to add with Knockout, and just a little extra practice with a variety of bindings, view model properties, and methods. I hope you've enjoyed this course and have learned a lot about using Knockout.js to simplify the process of creating interactive user interfaces with JavaScript. I'll be back soon with a brand new video course, and I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching.